Coming up on today's show, we'll be going through how Unlimited Card pays for itself with just two visits, and we'll be previewing Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, The Boogeyman, Transformers Rise of the Beasts, and more. Welcome to What's On at Cine World Cinemas. I am Luke Owen. And I'm Dan Layton. Do you know what, Dan? Usually we do a little bit of spiel yeah. here back and forth, yeah. a bit of fun banter, but there are too many movies. It's a big month. It is a big, big month. So you and I should go and find our seats. Yeah, we should go and talk about these films. Let's go. Do that. Let's go. Let's do this. I don't know, I hope you're sitting comfortably mm, because, right. you know, I know we want to talk about Stephen King's The Boogeyman. Yeah, scary. Very scary. You know. Stephen King's bit of a bit of a renaissance for Stephen King in terms of adaptations after the success They're of They're all the way out, exactly. It, it part two, we had, uh, what was it? Hell Cemetery. Yep, that one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Firestarter as yep. well. Like, so we're on like, a well, good, good turn of pace mm. for, for Stephen King adaptations good after. Him, good, absolutely. About time that man had some success in his life. <laughs> uh, but speaking of successes, I think the, the movie that's, I think most people are going to be talking about today is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. We've got our wonderful Cine World Cups here. Uh, yeah. I've got Miles on got, top of mine. Got Gwen. But yeah, I, I loved Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, it was a really fresh and... Ex I mean, we've seen so many superhero movies over the course of however long. And then they brought this one out, which just not only being an animated movie, but having Miles be our, our Spider-Man. Um, just so fresh and interesting and a, and a fascinating different take. But it's the, the animation style yeah. that like so, so Sony found their, they found their design. They mm. found their style. Like they even like patents the, the style that they used yeah. in, in the animation and stuff because it was so different. And it was so unique to how anyone else was doing animated movies. Unlike, yeah, unlike and, anything else. I was going to say, and I thought no one's doing animated movies like this. Mm. And I think that's what makes Spider-Verse stand out so much. And you yeah. know, the, the, these Spider-Man movies, I'm really excited for this one. They, you know, we had a, quite a bit of multiversal madness mm -hmm. uh, with, with Into the Spider-Verse, but this one is going all out. Like the poster for it is just like, here are 500 versions of Spider-Man. Yeah. There's the amazing part in the trailer where they sort of sail through all of the various different ones and then they, they do the meme thing of the, the pointing, three of them pointing, yeah. but it's all of them. I mean, the, the first one won an Academy Award as Best Animated Feature. So um, it, it, it's got a, a high bar yes. to, to meet. And I think judging on what we've seen so far and also the fact that they've taken time over putting this together and having it release, it's had a, a delayed release to, to get everything ready. I think it's setting itself up for a bit of success, actually. I think it's going to as yeah. well. I'm, I'm really, really stoked for this one. Uh, some friends of mine over in America uh, uh -huh. got to see it the other day. Yeah. And I was I was flooded with text messages from them being like, oh, you're going to like this one. Yeah. Yeah, you're really going to enjoy this. Yeah, there's, I mean, the, and the team behind it, they're very funny. Um, uh, they're very smart. They're very uh, thoughtful in the way that they're using the 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 narrative devices and the multiverse element of it because when um, the original came out we hadn't really seen that stuff in the giant uh, Marvel franchise big and proper yet mm. so it was really fun to to play with it and to use animation as a way to sort of do things that you can you have constraints in in, yeah. other, in other mediums so um, yeah a lot of fun and a lot of development of the characters in between times um, and if, it seems like from the trailer this one is a lot you know, very, I mean, it's Spider-Man is always really about identity and where you fit in the world and, you know, great power and responsibility and all that stuff. Not only that, of course, you can see this in IMAX, yeah. you can see this in Super Screen, mm -hmm. and you can see this in 4DX. Now, I watched the trailer for this in 4DX. Yeah. Laurie and I did our trailer reaction for it in 4DX, and it was like, you know, there was genuine, like, swinging through New mm. York and stuff as Spider-Man. It was a lot of fun. Very, very exciting. And, and also, if you were to see it in something like IMAX or, or Super Screen, you get to really appreciate the art history of it all. You know, the, the giant screen, all the colors, they're playing with all the colors of the rainbow. Oh, um, you know, so it's, 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 there are, there are so many ways that you're going to be able to feel really in this film. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'd yeah. say so. Yeah. And actually, if you think like, man, well, there's one film that's surely that's the only big film that's out in the month of June. As if. As if, because just one week later, Transformers Rise of Beasts is finally here. On this one, I fully defer to you. Yeah, I'm well. allow you your moment. Thank you very much, because we used to do this show uh, as a remote thing. We did, yeah. Because there was, you know, we were all locked indoors and mm. stuff. But 
Laurie and I used to talk about this movie a lot mm. and our excitement for this. <laughs> Bec- so we were t- talking with someone from Sydney World earlier and they said, are you excited for Transformers? I said, well, of course I am. I'm pushing 40. <laughs> If anything, I'm a prime age. I'm an optimist. I'm youthful. You I'm know, an I'm... optimist prime age. Hey, very good for this movie because I grew up in the 80s and, in, and into the 90s, which means that Transformers was a big part of my childhood. Yeah. And we got, you know, we had all the Bayformers mm-hmm. movies, and then all of a sudden, Bumblebee comes out, which was such an. I did the uh, the junket for Bumblebee, so right. I was. I've got. I know. I hate Seinfeld, and I, you know, very yeah. close. Um, and I. I, so I feel quite a fondness for it because it was the first time I ever did something like that. But what was so interesting about it was that it felt so different from what I had come to expect from Transformers as a franchise by really grounding it and making it emotional and the sort of core of it was... I, I appreciate all of that, but the robots now look like the toys I had when I was a kid. So okay. now so now that, that's where I'm coming at that's this from. I was just... I'll leave my analysis <laughs> over here. You, I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I do not care about your heart and what. That's actually fair. Because... I saw Optimus Prime and it looked like the Optimus Prime toy I had when I was a child. <laughs> so it was like, this is the best movie I've ever seen. Like the opening bit of Bumblebee is like this, this G1 um, sort of battle on Cybertron and stuff. And like there was Starscream and I was, I was like, oh my God, this looks like the cartoon. This is like the most <laughs> incredible thing I've ever seen in my life. And then like Optimus Prime, spoilers, like shows up at the end of the movie. I was like, oh my God, this movie is incredible. Like, this is the best thing this ever. This is what joy looks like. And like... Because the argument that Michael Bay always used to give was like, well, you can't make them look like they did in the 80s because they would look silly on screen. And it was like, well, look at it now yeah. because it looks awesome. And now we've got this movie and it's like Beast Wars. So you've got Optimus Primal mm. in there and you've got the Maximals in there. And now like, all of the, 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 there's a Porsche 911, which means that that's proper jazz is in this movie and uh, Mirage is in the movie and RC's in the movie. <laughs> and Laurie and I watched the trailer for this when they released the last trailer and Unicron shows up and we lost our minds. <laughs> we both screamed out loud, Unicron! Yeah. Like Unicron's in this movie. I know it's, uh, it's so genuinely thrilling and exciting. Mm. And I, I'm, I haven't been this excited about a Transformers property probably since I was a child. So like this is... This feels like a real big deal for me. I'm and I'm sure, there'll, I'm sure there'll be some heart and some emotion in there as well. But what <laughs> I really want to see are my G1 toys up on the big screen, smashing each other. I'm going to see it in the IMAX. Yeah. I'm see it in the IMAX. I'm going to see it in 4DX. I'm going to see it in every format I possibly can. I'm excited on your behalf. You know what I mean? Like I'm getting this secondhand excitement. Everyone should go and see this film next to someone who's this level of childish excitement about this film. Of course, like you can go see other things as well. It's not if, just if smashy want. robots. Yeah. We've got like nice period pieces yep. in Chevalier. Chevalier. Yeah. I, a, a word that I have said out loud a couple of times, and every time I've gone to say it, I've been unsure whether I'm saying it correctly. Chevalier. Chevalier. I, I mean, I saw. I've been seeing the trailers and the posters of this sort of thing. It's so lavish. Um, I, I don't really know what the film itself um, is, or what it's gonna, what story it's gonna tell me, which is. So one of the things I enjoy most about going to the movies is sit and having an unlimited card is being able to sit down in a movie not knowing too much about it and then being, you know, surprised and, and taken on a journey and allowing the film to tell me the story it's it's telling me. Um, but if you give me a trailer full of lavish costumes, I am going to say yes. Yeah, I was gonna, that was the point I was going to make about the unlimited mm. card. Is you've only got to go twice to, to get your money's worth yes, of your exactly. unlimited card. So yeah. like, I you can just go and check it out. Yeah, and and it's 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 um, a fun way of seeing things that sort of broadens your horizons. Like you know, you can go and see this this period piece with heart and, and soul, and I can go and see big toys bash each other on screen, which is what I want to go and see. There and then go. like if you. Oh man! Well, we've had Spider Man, yep. and we've had Transformers. Mm-hmm. Surely there can't be another big blockbuster I doubt movie. It. I doubt it. Well, just one week after that, it's the Flash. Egg on my face. The uh, you know this is effectively the end of the Snyderverse mm. as, as we now move into a new era of DC, mm. and this is kind of like almost a, a celebratory end yeah. to this because we've got Ezra Miller's Flash. We have got Ben Affleck's Batman in there. Yeah. We've got Mr. Zod. Lopez. Yeah, we've got... Uh, Z- oh, I see what you're doing yeah. now, yeah. I was trying to think, which actor is that? <laughs> and now he's doing... Like, Zod is back. We've got this cool, like, Elseworld version of Supergirl in yes. the movie. And it's the big screen return of Michael Keaton as Batman. My Batman up yeah. on screen again. I mean, my Batman is George Clooney. But um, I, I do have a real fondness for those original Batman films because I'm a massive Tim Burton fan. So I think that kind of the visual style, which was the first time Batman was made in that kind of like dark, 
underworldy version prior to that it was the adam west yeah which was the nice comic you know biff but which which is is wonderful in in its way um and then then, comedy show there you go and for a lot of people we have the the christian bale batman the nolan trilogy we have the rob pants and batman so many batmans that we've had in our time of course the ben affleck version but for me I, i have such a fondness for the um the world that tim burton created with the michael keaton batman so when you get that moment in the trailer of the of the the moon outlining mm. the the bat is is, is, it, is it the ship I yeah, can't, yeah. I can't, yeah 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 is his bat wing yeah the, yeah it looks incredible and I just I'm so in you know I'm so I love that they're they're finding a way to blend what we have come to expect of this era of DC with the the Michael Keaton style yeah you it, know what I mean and look, multiverse is like it's the big thing mm. at the moment like Marvel are doing a lot of multiverse stuff mm. uh, you know Into the Spider Verse yep. is doing that and you know one of the bigger movies last year everything everywhere all at once is mm. doing like, and this is doing some more like multiverse stuff as well i think uh, the audiences now are like really just sort of buying into this idea and this feels like a really big popcorny way to yeah. expand upon this mul- and like bringing in you know maybe some audiences who haven't been to see a superhero movie in a while because like well i get to see keaton again as yeah. batman like i did when i was a kid and he's so good i mean he was so good in the in uh homecoming spider-man homecoming yeah um which was sort of that a, reveal back in the toe of the yeah i mean huge but the dipping the toe back in um into this the superhero world pulling it off with panache his his work in birdman which was this kind of parody version of all of that um was was great so to see him step back into put the cowl back on you yeah know, it was quite quite something i think it's gonna be a very special moment and yeah you know as we are staring at the beginning of a new era for dc movies a nice way to sort of bring everything together and then yes, the the core narrative. I'm I'm not someone who has read many of the comics, but from my understanding and from all the stuff that we've spoken about with this movie in particular, it's going to be a massive uh, emotional catharsis moment as and well. Yeah, doing like you know doing essentially Operation Flashpoint type mm. stuff, and we are, you know, it, it's it's it, I think it's going to have a good bit of a uh, good amount of hearts. Yes, to it. My uh, favorite. I, yeah, which you, you love. I love it. Uh, as well as, you know, some nice smashy fun to it uh, <laughs> as well. I'm very excited to see this. Mm. Very curious to see this. I think my one is mainly curious. I'm mainly like, there's a, there's a lot of little things here and I want to see what you do with them. And I, there are things that I have heard about the movie mm. that I'm I'm ex- I'm excited to explore further. Mm. That's available on IMAX mm-hmm. again, 4DX yeah. again. Like really cool ways to experience these movies. But if you want a more like you know, a gentler approach, just going to see a nice, a wonderful comedy movie. Ooh. No Hard Feelings is coming out. We've got a preview screening of this as well, an unlimited screening of No Hard Feelings coming out as well. I love that you started that by saying a gentler, a gentler experience. Are you trying to say that this is not going to be a nice, gentle... I don't think that there's a lot of gentle going on what? here. Have you seen this trailer? Are you kidding me? No, it's not, This it's not Jennifer a... Lawrence <laughs> comedy movie. <laughs> this looks like a fun time to be spent with the parents. <laughs> I'm not seeing this film with my parents, but I will be seeing I'll this film. I'll with your parents. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, that's because you're the same sort of generation. You know? <laughs> uh, no, I'll, I will be seeing this film with, with my friends and then go for a little drink afterwards. and then. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited for this. Jennifer Lawrence is uh, someone who's done the kind of, she's done her big franchises. She's won her Oscars. She's, you know, established her career as, as this really quite brilliant actress and now she's doing this bawdy old comedy. I love which she's, this. We've always known she's been so good at because yeah. she's got that energy, hasn't she, as a person. Yeah. Um, so we, yeah. It's really got that feel about it. It's what they would call in America the, the R-rated yes. comedy. And, I, and I, I think she's going to be really good yeah. in that style. And I've always loved that kind of comedy, like, you know, your American Pies. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, and, and those things. I'm, and, you strike me as the person who's enjoyed those once or twice in his life. I very much so. Yes, yeah. you know, I, I, I am old. Yeah. So I, I was a teenager mm. when uh, the, those American Pie films became like and started that sort of teen comedy. Mm. And this isn't quite like that teen comedy flavor to it. This is more sort of like that that Judd Apatow yeah. comedy that we saw. We got really in the late two thousands mm-hmm. and the mid two thousands with like Superbad and Knocked Up, and um, there was the one with the three kids that came out a couple of years ago that I really liked as well. Um, but yeah, so I, I think it's kind of in that mold. Mm. I, I, and I saw the trailer for this and my first thought was like, I cannot wait to watch this with my wife. Uh, there's a film that uh, came out a couple of years ago with Charlize Theron and Seth Rogen. Yes, that, absolutely, with the, the presidential. What it was yeah. called, that's exactly the one. And I, and I just had such a good time with that film, unexpectedly. Um, and this is giving me the same sort of energy as that. And I'm really excited to just have a little comedy yeah in our lives. a little bit of comedy in amongst all of the you know the the very serious dramas that i love and the giant smashy spectacles that i love little this, comedy in there as well 
It's a cinema. What a month for Unlimited. So no hard feelings out on the 21st, but you could see it a couple of days earlier. Ooh. Speaking of Unlimited, Ooh. because we do have an unlimited screening of No Hard Feelings mm. on the 19th, so you can go see the movie a couple of days early. Yeah. And then brag to your friends that you've already seen the movie that they've not seen yet. I didn't like to do that. I well, actually, the... unless you refer a friend. Oh, and then you can bring them with you. Bring them with you. Yeah. And then you both get like a month free. So if you refer your friend to sign up to Unlimited yep. using your code, you both get a month free. And you can do that, and, and then you can go and see your movies together. And then brag to your other friends that you've seen the movie. And you can get a whole gang. Uh, unless, of course, you refer them as well. <gasps> and they refer two friends, and they refer two friends, and, and they so on. Before you know it, you've got an entire cinema full of people. Not unlike, I went to the unlimited screening of Hypnotic um, last month and had a great time surrounded by It was full. It was packed. Mm. And I, had a, I, I loved seeing movies with people who were there to experience the movie and you're all seeing it sort of first, so no one's got preconceived yeah. notions or agendas, and you're just kind of, what's this? What's this going to be like? I've done it with Moonfall, did it with um, with with Hypnotic recently. I love it. It's great. We're talking about like you know the variety, the different flavors of cinema. Mm. Another very different flavor. Asteroid City is yes. out this month. Wes Anderson's latest movie. I've seen you all on TikTok creating your lives, like shooting them like you're living a Wes Anderson film. Uh, so you best be excited to come and see this one and see the actual Wes Anderson masterpieces on your screen. Um, unique style, yes, very and, unique and, style. and a very specific style mm. uh, is Wes Anderson. I saw the trailer for Asteroid City, and this is like, oh yeah, this is this is unequivocally a Wes Anderson yeah. movie. Not just from the, the the cast that's in play yeah. there, because it's it's a lot of the the familiar faces you'll have seen from Wes Anderson movies, but like it's fifties retro yeah. style, the color palette, the color palettes, and everything. Mm. Yeah, so like I think if you are a Wes Anderson head, a Wes head, right. you'll nice. probably be like front and center for this one. It's giving me. Um... Flavors of like your sort of B movie sci fi's from from yonks ago, um, which I'm quite fond of. You know, I like your blobs and your things and all that, yeah. sort of that stuff. Um, and Black Lagoons, um, and and I'm really intrigued to to see how it played out. Just it just debuted at Cannes, so it's a. Uh, you know, on its way to us. Well, speaking of can. Oh, come on now. What have I done? Well, okay, so we've had Spider-Man. I've given you a segue. We've had Spider-Man, yeah. right? And, and then we've had Transformers. Yeah. And then we've, then we've had The Flash. Yeah. You might think, oh, I'm a bit full for blockbusters. You're never too full. But for you're never too, and like, lucky for you, I've got a fourth one oh, for you. Oh, come on yeah. now. Indiana Jones, The Dial of Destiny, Indy 5. Let's Indiana Jones back up on the big screen. Mm. Harrison Ford. Donning the the hats, mm -hmm. cracking a whip, <laughs> and riding a horse, yeah. and going on another adventure. Mm. And I, I, I grew up as an Indiana Jones fan. Right. My friend has uh, just had a, a new baby, and that baby is called Henry Jones. And um, because we're a big Indiana Jones, we are like when you all take the day off work, yeah. so that we can all go and see this on the, the day that it comes out. Mm. And that is what we're doing. Yeah. We, are, we four dads yeah. are taking the day off work, <laughs> and we are not spending that with our children. Nope. We are instead going to the cinema, yep. and then we are going to go and have dinner afterwards, and we're all very excited about it. <laughs> I, um, I love an adventure movie. So I love Pirates of the Caribbean, and I love like National Treasure. I have a real soft spot for National Treasure. And Indiana Jones is like the godfather of those kind of movies, that action adventure kind of, as you say, whip cracky, you know, running away, chasing away from the big balls, the snakes, yeah. all, all of the whole thing. The, the, the whole sequence with the River Phoenix on the train, oh, I just, I love so much. That's crazy, um, man. So I, I'm, I'm very, very excited to see uh, this iteration, not least because it's got an extra bit of flavor Thanks to Phoebe Waller Bridge, who's yeah. taken Fleabag herself. Fleabag herself taken a pass at the script and is in the film as well. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm really intrigued. That's some interplay. I'm really excited mm. to see Harrison Ford and Phoebe Waller Bridge. Bit and the of thing back about and forth banter. Harrison Ford is that he seems to really enjoy working with actors of, of a younger generation as well and having that kind of back and forth and that interplay. I have my seat in IMAX. I know I always go on about this, but I have my seat. Uh, it is. It is. Uh, I'm not going to tell you in case you try and rob it. But I go and see these big movies as close to day of release as physically possible. I always get my seat. I always get a nice big beverage mm. and a little. I get nachos. Yeah. Well, I could get it in this actually, couldn't I? You yeah. could do. Take uh, Spider Gwen with, with you. This one. Yeah. And then carry and then reuse. Oh. Oh. Reuse. Delightful. Love that. Um, and I get my little nachos. Yep. And I have a nice time. I'm usually finished the nachos before the first trailer started. Of course. Nice yeah. But then, um, yeah, and it's it's just such an amazing experience to have all of these movies in that same venue with this giant, you know, big IMAX thing. What what a month for it. And the good thing about, I'm 
preaching to the quiet here, I'm sure. But the good thing about the Unlimited card is the ability to go and see these movies. And all I have to do is just pay that little bit extra to go and see it in the IMAX, to go and see it on the, the giant special format. Um, and it's... And it's a dream. And you're going to be saving your money as well yeah. on those snacks, on those nachos, yeah. and on your drinks because you get 10% off. You could take, you know, it from us, take our word for how great the, the Cineworld uh, deal is, the Cineworld Unlimited deal is. But why don't I hear it from Big Manny? All right, cool. Man's got some fresh popcorn there, innit? Use your unlimited pass to watch bare movies at Cineworld and save 10% off snacks on that. You get me? It's a mad thing, cuz. If you want a slightly different change of pace, mm -hmm. we can talk about these changes of pace and the brilliant flavours of different flavours of cinema. Just so many different varieties this one. We've got Ruby Gilman, yep. Teenage Kraken. Yeah, lovely animated film. Uh, we've had The Little Mermaid last month, so it's mermaids in that with the goodies. Mm -hmm. Flipped on its head in this one. Uh, Krakens have a bad rep, this film. And uh, it's actually the mermaids that everyone thinks are special, but... Maybe not. And we've also got an unlimited screening of War Pony on June 6th. It is a packed, mm. packed month. Yeah. And Dan, there's more. Oh, come on now. So, okay, well, let's, let's quickly talk about Unlimited because yes. I think this is a great month to sign up for Unlimited. If you weren't sure whether or not Unlimited would be right for you, June is the month to try it. Because if you just saw, Len, okay, well, there's two movies I want to... Actually, there's three movies mm -hmm. I want to see there. You just pay for two of those movies, yeah, and you can go see the third one as well, yeah. because your unlimited card will cost you the same price you would for two cinema tickets, yeah. and you can go see as many movies as you want then for the rest of the month. And when so that's why for me when I when I go and see as many films as I do in a month, it's the most, uh, it's the it's the easiest way of making sure I've got access to all the films rewarding. I love. Rewarding. Oh yeah, and oh, there's yeah. rewards there as well yeah. because you get discounts off. Uh, when you're buying your concessions as well. Mm -hmm. You get 25% off at restaurants like Bella mm -hmm. Italia. Oh, so date night. There's loads of great things you can have. And of course, there's the referral. If you're already an unlimited user, and so you know all of this, yeah. use the referral friend scheme. You get a free month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pack this screen out with your mates. That's what I'd do. There are other things coming out this month, including on June 7th, a re-release of Thelma and Louise. Oh. And the week after that, one of my favorite movies of all time, the 25th anniversary of The Big Lebowski. I love this movie. Yeah, that, that is, if I had to pick from a list of movies that Luke likes, Big Lebowski's on there. Yeah, it is. I remember seeing it for the first time when I was a teenager and being like, oh, this is what cinema is. <laughs> this is what film is. Do you know, I, did, I only saw it for the first time. Um, I was probably about 26, so it was a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. so it was last week. Um, no, I only saw it for the first time quite recently. So what a great opportunity to go and see it as it was as it was made for back in the day on the big screen. I love when these old movies get the re-releases because it's, a, it, it's one thing to appreciate cinema, you know, in hindsight and, and, and watch it at home and... and, and even if you're like making the experience as close to cinema as possible with your lights off and you, whatever, um, it's not quite the same vibe as when the lights around you go down and it flickers on into life on the big screen. Yeah. I always think about seeing Shawshank Redemption for the first time I ever saw that film was at the cinema in the Cineworld and I just bawled my eyes out at being how lucky I was. This was in, in the middle of the, the pandemic. It was so lucky to be back in the cinema experiencing this film the way it was supposed to be. So, you know, Thelma and Louise, Big Lebowski. And that's and the, not all. And The Wicker Man. The Wicker Man. The, the Wicker Man the following week. Which is a film I absolutely love. The original is, is anniversary. fascinating. Um, and I, it's one of the, you know when you see a movie and then all you do is read about it? That's what happened with me and The Wicker Man. Yeah. You know. And, uh, you know, hey, in a couple of years time, maybe we'll get the anniversary re-release of the Nicolas Cage Wicker Man. Give it to me <laughs> now. But we've also got stage on the big screen at select Cineworld cinemas across this great nation of ours. On June 4th, Met Opera Life's performance of Die Zerberflut. And on the 13th of June, we have the Royal Opera House live with Il Trovatore. On the 28th of June, we have Matthew Bourne's Sleeping Beauty. But on the 15th, National Theatre Live's Fleabag. We also have some other special screenings and events on the 4th of June, an autism friendly screening of The Little Mermaid. And then on the 15th, Greatest Days premiere live event, which is a live stream from the premiere ahead of the film screening. And if you're a fan of documentaries on the 17th of June, we have a treat for you. We have J-Hope in the box and Sugar Road to D-Day. 
But I'm sad to say that's all we've got time for on this edition of What's oh, On no. at City World Cinemas. But you can check out all of the movies that we discussed today and book your tickets and find out more about the Unlimited Cards by clicking the links in the video description down below. Also, you can uh, listen to this in a podcast version wherever you get your podcasts from. Good, bad, indifferent podcast players, the choice <laughs> is yours. But we will see you next month for another edition of What's On at City World Cinemas. I've been Luke Owen. And I've been Dan Layton. And that's What's On. Oh, 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 oh